Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. podcast i'm your host ryan medlin and i'm joined here by matt shields say hello hello yes this is a special day because this is the second recording of the first episode oh yeah <laughs> this is going going well I had some technical problems had some problems with it being way too long <laughs> so mm-hmm. we've tightened up refined rebuilt yes bigger and better bigger is better yeah that's what i've heard <laughs> so i've so i've been told by certain people yeah <laughs> made me self-conscious okay <laughs> oh, shit. uh anyway fucking car crash already <laughs> uh anyway on this podcast we look at films tv and shows uh and games and uh, to see how they impacted and relate to the world that we live in uh for this episode we were looking at the 1998 Jim Carrey movie, The Truman Show, and how it uh, predicted how reality TV will evolve in the 21st century and the consequences of reality TV on our society. Uh, What is your experience with reality television, Matt? What Um, have you watched? uh, Any particular favorites? So I don't, like, I've seen, like, shows. I've seen bits of Love Island. I've seen, like, bits of Big Brother because my dad's really into that. Um, Like, I'm a celeb, stuff like that. Hmm. Never really been a huge fan of it until recently. <laughs> I feel kind of bad about being a fan of it. You should. Um, yeah, it's, it's rough. I don't know. It's Yeah, it's just one of those things, Yeah, I suppose. I think for me, it's always been a bit of a love-hate relationship. My mm-hmm. dad's into all those like uh, American like gas monkey garage oh, and, yeah, yeah. and the fishing ones, all the different like, yeah, oh, yeah. going out and catching crabs. <laughs> going to go and grab some crabs from the ocean. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's into certain ones. One we'll, we'll talk a little bit about towards the end. Okay. Um, just because it's, it's noteworthy for how bad it is. Um, <laughs> but reality television started in uh, 1973 with the uh, show An American Life. It was launched on uh, PBS in America. And it was uh, it followed the, the Loud family. That's what they were called, okay. Loud, L-O-U-D. And... Um, at least I think that's how it's said. Yeah. It might be load or whatever. Load. I don't know. What, who cares? No, no one cares. <laughs> but um, they basically went into the house and filmed their life for like seven months. Okay. Uh, they were just like a regular family. Yeah. And uh, while tamed by today's standards, mm-hmm. it faced like a lot of the same criticisms of being inauthentic and such. So it's yeah. interesting to see. That's when it started. And then yeah. it's still having the same criticisms it did today. But it's just way worse in today's yeah. world. Yeah. Um, so why The Truman Show? Well, it's a film directed by Peter Weir, starring Jim Carrey as uh, Truman Burbank, uh, Laura Linney as Meryl, and Ed Helms as Christoph. Can you can you guess the name there? The nice little pun there of Christoph. It's, yeah. Can, it's, can uh, you get it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, it is. They are not particularly subtle, but I guess no. reality television isn't subtle either no yeah no it's not (laughs) that's a good point i guess it fits um truman is born and lives in the town of sea haven which is actually a set for a reality show uh broadcast 24 7 all over the world basically documenting truman's life uh where none of it is actually real it's all just a reality show scripted by the producers who the main producer is christoph Mm. he is the god of this of this world utopia yeah and uh the film basically follows truman figuring out that this world is a lie it is a show um and finds a way to break out basically yeah of the entire thing um it's particularly interesting doing this as a podcast as through research um i'm not gonna say this is the most original podcast in the world because no. i found a number of articles from a couple of years ago yeah that all talked about how the Truman Show predicted reality television. Yeah, I mean, like, it's pretty, like, I wouldn't say it's hard to be. 
But I guess this is a, a collection of also the effects that real life television also might have. Some nasty ones, especially <laughs> recently. There's actually a pretty recent thing that happened that was not not good. No. We'll get into it later. Cool. Um, and the main show we're going to be looking at, because I feel like it is the most accurate in terms of the techniques that The Truman Show uses to represent reality television, um, is The Bachelor, the best reality show <laughs> on television. Um, it is a dating show. Uh, created by Mike Fleiss. Mike Fleece? I have no idea how you say that name. Whatever. Um, and hosted by the man, the god, <laughs> Chris Harrison. <laughs> Round of applause for Chris. That'll make the mic peak. <laughs> That's, that'll be good. I've got to edit that down. Um, anyway, so in this show, this dystopian madness, 30 women compete for the love of one man. It's a good thing they're not Mormon. There'd be seven winners. <laughs> uh, and uh, contestants get eliminated, eliminated every week through uh, the rose ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Hand out little roses to everybody. Will right. you accept this rose? All that. And uh, it's pretty bad. It's a pretty terrible show, but it is also in very enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, towards the end of the show, uh, a winner, the last woman standing, will be proposed to usually if it all goes to plan mm -hmm. uh and then uh that's that's it and then typically we'll see a little bit of oh what happened after we'll get a catch up with them after the season mm. to see how it went the bachelor this season is a man named peter weber uh we did at some point dub him maverick because he is a pilot and they love to make a lot of flying puns because of it yeah but he is a loser and he sucks Doesn't so deserve. we're not <laughs> so we're not going to give him uh, the joy of having such a good nickname. No, he is he it. is Pilot Pete. Pilot Pete. He's a loser. And, <laughs> Pete the pilot. As as the show consistently reminds you, he is a loser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he sucks. Yeah. Um, his parents. She introduces his parents because they're important to oh my what God. happens. Yeah. And some of the points we'll bring up later. Uh, Barbara Weber. Barb. Barb. Who is the worst mother. <laughs> all she, time yeah just making bad decisions for her son yeah just ruining his life basically we'll get into it later yeah. i know you might you might have a moment where you go strong, off yeah <laughs> you'll go off that, there's probably gonna be a moment go off sis <laughs> sis go off uh and the final two contestants in the show who the two are going to be focusing on when it comes to the bachelor or Hannah Ann Sluss, which is a difficult name to say when not trying to say something very derogatory Hannah Ann Sluss. <laughs> Uh, and Madison Pruitt, uh, a quiet, likable Christian, Christian. pure woman, <laughs> who Dream. you you are quite infatuated with. I was. I think I'm over it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I've realised it's quite an unhealthy thing to to be as devout as she is. Yeah. No. No. Well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. It's pretty scary, that isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Anyway, so before we get into the main aspect of why I think these are accurately comparable mm. and also shows why reality television is terrible I have some minor fun points to get into uh first and foremost uh production and music that is used within the shows mm -hmm. oh god <laughs> uh the Truman show accurately shows how manipulative this can be to the audience um in you know just removing basically the the curtains yeah uh, and showing you how it is in this clip specifically, uh, where it showcases Truman. Uh, Truman at this point is finding out that this show is this is a show and it's fake. Yeah. And uh, he is. Uh, they need to get some way to rein him back in. And uh, so they do some pretty messed up stuff. Yeah, I found him for you, Truman. That's why I came by tonight. Sure, he's got quite a story to tell. Stop believing. And why did Curb Cam eat us? 
son. Oh. Looking for closer? No, 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 no. Fade up music. And now, go close. Years wasted. I'll make it up to you, I swear. So that is a scene where Truman is reintroduced to his father for the first time. He thought he was dead. They killed him on the show. And it's important to note that his dad is, a, is an actor. It's not actually his dad. No. Um, and you could just hear there them directing the show. Obviously, it's live. Uh, and the bringing the music up at the very specific moment, that is a thing that The Bachelor loves to do. Mm. Uh, I could pull any number of clips. <laughs> We'd be here all day if yeah. I did. Um, but it's just that... One thing that I've noticed through watching these episodes of The Bachelor is that there's a specific thing that they love to do to waste time and also try to get an effect, which is they'll have someone say something. They'll have like, so Peter is talking with Madison or whatever. Talk to her. Madison will say something. You'll be like, music will cut out. Then it'll go shot, <laughs> reverse shot, <laughs> back to Peter, back to Madison. For like five minutes <laughs> before anybody says anything <laughs> to try and build suspense. But yeah. also I feel like waste time. These episodes of The Bachelor are an hour and a half each. They're long. They don't need to be that long. No. I mean, <laughs> but the, the editing Truman. is just excruciatingly long. Yeah, like the film was about as long as one of those episodes. Yeah, the film was an hour and 40. Yeah. And this is, yeah, an hour and hour and a half per episode. Mm. Of two and a half hours if you count the, the pilot, opening. Yeah. <laughs> so Nuts. just ridiculous. Yeah, I could bring up any number of clips from the bachelor where they use this, but it's just it's just too much. Yeah. Um advertising in reality television, also a big deal. Uh in the Truman show, there are a couple aspects. Actually, there is a, a clip here I should really be using, which I forgot to write down. Um but the Truman Show uses it in a couple of ways. Uh, notable one is the two twins, the elderly twins, yeah. who uh, come up to uh, Truman while he's just walking around and they push him up against a, mm. a billboard. Yeah. Or it's not a billboard. It's but like an ad. Look at on the wall. A poster yeah. on the wall. And uh, you can cha- see it change uh, as we go on. Uh, or they do it again later in the... Uh, later in the film and mm. you can see it's changed and it, at first you don't recognize it as an ad no because you're like oh it's just, just it's just it's a just weird that. like camera angle yeah, it's yeah. weird but then once you are like oh that's Sorry. what this is yeah um i think it's i think it's initially a very subtle aspect that's yeah, a very yeah. good way to it's how reality television would do it yeah i think it's it's incredibly well done but the big aspect of truman show when it's shown uh this technique is when he is having what should be a deeply emotional conversation with Meryl, his wife. Mm. Um, and then uh, something, something weird just, just she just goes into robot mode, yeah. just show mode. Let me get you some help, Truman. You're not well. Why do you want to have a baby with me? You can't stand me. That's not true. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mococo drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? I've tasted other cocos. This is the best. What the hell does this have to do with anything? Tell me what's happening! Well, you're having a nervous breakdown. That's what's happening. You're part of this, aren't you? Ruin! <laughs> Meryl! You are scaring me! No. You're scaring me, Meryl. What are you gonna do? Dice me? Slice me or peel me? There's so many choices! No! Do something! What? What'd you say? 
you say? Who are you talking to? Nothing. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. You said you said. No, I didn't talk. I wasn't talking to anybody. No. Me. Talk to me! I don't know anything. Please stop. Stay where you are. So that clip, she's obviously promoting. Start in the middle of this emotional conversation. Just starts promoting this this hot chocolate yeah. <laughs> drink, and I love uh, the the thing she picks up to defend herself is a product that they promote yeah. earlier in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, this when he says, oh, "Are you gonna slice me, dice me, or peel me?" Yeah, yeah. Is is what she says when she's promoting that product earlier in the film. Mm. This movie's so good. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> this movie's so good. It's the subtle things like that that make yeah. you go like, ah, oh, smart. Yeah. <laughs> smart filmmaking. Um, The Bachelor does this immensely. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the previous seasons, uh, that one of the dates that The Bachelor and the contestant went on uh, revolved them eating a lot of ice cream by Halo Top. <laughs> Halo Top. Um, and by the end of the season... Uh, that contestant was in the hot seat with Chris Harrison. They were having a one-on-one conversation and she is given by a man wearing an apron and a little cap a lifetime supply oh <laughs> of Halo Top ice cream yeah. coming on this nice, which, oh, not a lifetime supply, but it's a lot of ice cream. Yeah. Um, and it's it's become a bit of a meme in, yeah. in, in, in Batch Nation, which is what the fan base of The Bachelor call themselves. Hashtag Batch Nation. Nation. Batch Nation. Um, and also like just the places they go mm. uh, early in in the season that we're looking at season 24 with Peter uh, they go to of all places the most lovely place on the planet Cleveland, Cleveland Ohio. Ohio and they do one hell of a job trying to make Cleveland look like somewhere you would want to go <laughs> <laughs> uh, to no avail I don't want to go to Cleveland <laughs> no. um, but then they also go to uh Australia later, yeah, and the amount of shots of the beaches and oh. the kangaroos, and they go and uh, do this thing where they climb to the top of the building. Well, they don't climb, but they no, go they, to the top of the yeah, building yeah. that's very high up, and they go to a kangaroo reserve, yeah. kangaroo sanctuary, um, and almost get kicked by a bunch of kangaroos. Like boxing kangaroos <laughs> are out. Kangaroo yeah. Jack's there. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna have them. Shaq Black in that movie. Jack Black is in Kangaroo Jack, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. I was just like, Jack Black just came to my head when you said that. Yeah, I think so. he might be. Nacho Libre. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our next one. Deconstruction of Nacho Libre yeah, sure. in relation to real world. <laughs> um, but yeah, every location that they go to, the travel agency or travel board uh, that is there will work with the show to best promote uh they're where they're at right now. Mm. You were just checking up on something. It was Jack, yeah, Jack Black. Jack Black isn't in Kangaroo Jack. Damn it. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't know. Probably the whole Jack in Kangaroo Jack, maybe. Maybe. I swore he was in that. No, he's not. Anyway, who cares? <laughs> uh, <laughs> who cares now that I'm wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Um. So yeah, and the other thing they love to do, they love to have, they know exactly who their audience is, which is Southern... Christian white women mm-hmm. and they love them some country music. They love it. Every year to have some no name <laughs> musical artist come on and they'll do a really bad performance because they always suck. Mm-hmm. Except the one year they had air supply on. I guess that's moderately decent. I have no clue. I, they're the only <laughs> one who I recognize the name of. Yeah. So it was like, oh, air supply. I've heard of them before. Mm. Um, but this year they went extra meme um mm-hmm. and this will get into our main point later um they uh musical artist country uh phenomenal country music star chase rice mm-hmm. which what a name uh appears and is to do a performance for a date uh featuring peter and another contestant called victoria <laughs> but as it turns out there may be something extra added here saucy this may not be just a promotion for chase rice this may be a little devious in its design i just can't wait to see your face wait why because you have no idea what's coming (laughs) (laughs) i have one more surprise for victoria we have our own private chase rice concert and she loves country so i'm excited to surprise her what is it what is it we'll soon find out 
We turn the corner, I see Chase, my ex-boyfriend. Nothing could be worse. I'm freaking out right now. Freaking oh out. God. What are the chances? <laughs> what are the chances? Do I mean, how could have the producers have known yeah, no. that <laughs> Chase you, Rice is her ex-boyfriend? <laughs> do you think Peter knew who Chase Rice was before this? He knew who... He was a fan. He was oh, loving okay. the concert. Oh, my God. He was loving it. Yeah, yeah. He didn't know that they obviously dated. Oh, man. But he was like... There's another clip. I'm not going to play because it it's too long. Oh, yeah. But he's like, oh, uh, she goes, yeah, no, that Chase Rice is my ex-boyfriend. And he's like, what? How could you? What? <laughs> no, what? But I just talked to him. They literally had a conversation about his relationship with Victoria yeah. to Chase Rice in that episode. And he's and Chase Rice is like, yeah, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's a, hope it goes well. Yeah. Like... Been there, done that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's good, man. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, like, that is the start of the main point we're getting into here, which is the emotional manipulation mm -hmm. of both the audience and, I think, most importantly, the cast. Yeah. Uh, in this show, and Peter doesn't, exactly help his case <laughs> but uh similar to what they do on the Truman show when they're trying to emotionally manipulate him to get him to go along yeah with the show uh early in the movie they have his father die at sea mm -hmm. so then Truman would be scared of the ocean and never want to leave sea haven because it's yeah. surrounded by war mm -hmm. um the bachelor is all emotional <laughs> manipulation yeah uh practically setting up to ruin Peter's life throughout the course of the show um, in a way that's rather sad. Um, one of the most uh, big aspects. So I guess I should give some background on Hannah's, Hannah Ann's relationship with Peter and Madison's relationship with Peter. Hannah Ann is a, a wonderful girl, uh, yeah. very pretty. Uh, and the relationship with Peter is pretty solid. Like it's kind of perfect, almost too perfect. Yeah. Um, but it's going well. And the logical person would go, yeah, he should probably go with her. Yeah. But with Madison, she's been the front runner for pretty much most of the season. She, uh, he's really into her. Mm -hmm. She seems like a nice girl. Yeah. But she's got a secret. She does. She is a hardcore Christian. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Um, but she is a virgin. Yeah. And she's saving herself for marriage. Now, Peter is a dirty dog. He's a party boy. In a previous season, Peter was known for uh, sleeping with uh, the Bachelorette. Um, the Bachelorette, by the way, is a is a spin off that is the exact same show, but the roles are flipped. So it's yep. thirty dudes vying for one woman. Mm. Um, Peter slept with the Bachelorette, uh, Hannah B, um, four times in a windmill <laughs> on one night. Oh my god! <laughs> so this uh, Peter is not the type of guy to say. I'm not going to have sex. No. He is. No, he's... It's, the opportunity presents itself. He's he's halfway there already. Yeah. Like, And he's got Han Ann and <laughs> Victoria from the earlier clip or the other two contestants he could potentially sleep with at this point in the yeah. show. Final three. Um, and uh, Madison, you'd think if you were a virgin or if you were saving yourself for marriage, you maybe would leave it to... Or would uh, say it earlier in the show. Yeah. Be like, hey, just so you know, when we get to this point... Um, she doesn't. No. She leaves it right to the point where they uh, are given the green light to sleep with each other. <laughs> to mention, oh, hey, I, uh, I'm i I'm not going to be super cool if you sleep with the other girls because no. I'm sort of saving myself for marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, it is known with uh, my research at Batch Nation, uh, it is known that they, the producers will typically not make, but sort of convince the contestants to act a certain way or do certain things. Yeah. So it is pretty likely given previous situations that the producers told her not to say anything early on. Mm. Uh, so this would be more drama yeah. later on. Um, 
guess what it works it's very awkward yeah um all three girls are staying in the same place <laughs> so when they come back from the night of spending the night of passion passion pure, with peter just, oh. uh hey guess what they have to walk in <laughs> in front of the two other girls and they just, just to make it super awkward they're just watching they're like you have a good time the evil so eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's totally what it is that's totally what it is it's just it's rough yeah and you can see Madison, she knows. Yeah. And she's not happy when the other two girls Poor walk in. Madison, man. So Peter can't help himself. He sleeps with the other two girls. Idiot. Goes on the date with Madison. Mm-hmm. They have a conversation. She's like, this is kind of messed up. Like, you slept with two of the girls and then you want me to accept a proposal. Yeah. Or potential proposal okay, in four yeah. days. So Madison leaves the show. Yep. Um, and then... Actually, she doesn't leave the show, leave the show yet. No. She, she stays. Yeah. And they go to hometowns. hometowns. Well, not hometowns. Meet the family. Well, yeah. We have to meet the family. Aunt Anne's meeting with the family goes more well than it probably should, given yeah. the fact that they probably spent an hour together. Yeah. Uh, but Peter's mother, Barbara, and this is why she's important, loves Aunt Anne. Yeah, she does. She immediately sees her as the daughter that she always wanted. Just, yeah. And <laughs> Madison's meeting doesn't go as well. Doesn't no. go as well. They don't like her. They don't feel she's giving 100% of her heart to Peter. Mm-hmm. Mind her, the show's been recording for about six weeks at yeah. this point. So yeah, you, yeah. you'd they, imagine... They haven't known each other very long. This is like, like romance on fast forward. And also like the big thing that his family didn't like about um, Madison was like she made them wait inside the house for a while while yeah. Madison and Peter actually had like a heart to heart talk. An important which is conversation. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is what you need for a healthy relationship really yeah. if someone's bugging you. So their parents are like missing the point entirely. I think they're, they made it about themselves. So what we get is um, some of the biggest overacting mm. from Peter's mother that I see I've Here ever seen go. and realistically should not have been shown. <laughs> No. <laughs> on television she pure gave her a spotlight uh oh yeah she loves it yeah she's on instagram she's on mm-hmm. cameo <laughs> charging people i think 30 bucks it's my next birthday present to you man. <laughs> <laughs> oh if you did that <laughs> if you did i'm gonna do that for you because you just love her oh right let's uh, let's hear what barbara has to say in this very awkward situation and now you have a perfect girl right in front of you and you're gonna risk that, bud? Why is it that you're not just immediately like, yeah, Hannah Ann's the answer here? You guys, you guys, it's like, it's, you guys, uh, you just don't, I was telling you, dog, like, you guys don't know the matter yet now. I mean, this is our something entire, you can put Our into entire words? relationship, our entire relationship has been absolutely perfect. Has it been better than Hannah Ann's? It's been, there's been no hiccups. Lies. The, the stuttering. Outright lies. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to it. You would say there's no hiccups? Until this, until this, and that's what everyone's just caught up on this, and I can see past this. I'm not someone that just gets caught up in this. Pushing you. Don't you. Get it. Peter, we're no, not li- pushing you. I'm just being real. I'm, I'm just being real. And I'm being just being real. Would you rather us lead you I, down the wrong I, road? I hear you guys, but you guys also have to trust me as much as I trust you guys, and you guys have not been dating these girls for the last two months. Fair. Yeah, fair assessment. Fair point. Um, but that's only the beginning. Yeah. It we then get into Barbara... Goes Super Saiyan Goku, yep. <laughs> Ultra look. Instinct, oh. Super Saiyan, and uh, unleashes her ultimate attack yep. of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an alien. It's even worse. <laughs> 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 Anna, Anne loves you with all of her heart. Don't let her go. Don't let her go. Bring her home. Bring her home to us. We will welcome her with open arms. We will welcome her with all the love in the world. All the love in the world. She's a dream come true. And God has placed her there for you. That's what love stories are made out of. Someone that is so madly in love with you. You gotta stop doing this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop uh, uh it was actually really hard to get that end a bit there yeah he, um, she immediately continues to go off yeah on stuff so um but yeah emotional manipulation here 
we do not need to see this on television. No. I don't want to. No, no. Um, but The Bachelor, Bachelor hey. producers are like, oh. oh <laughs> the dish. Oh, this is delicious. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Madison leaves. She's like, after a very terrible meeting with her par- with Peter's parents, she's like, screw this, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> And Hannah Ann wins. Yeah. She 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 literally wins. Yeah. Because it's a competition. Yeah. yeah. No one's uh, left. No. Uh, winner by default. <laughs> yeah. That's how you want to find the love of your life. Yeah. Uh, you just win by default. Just before Peter proposes to her, Chris Harrison comes up and is like, yo, man, listen, we got some bad news. Um, and this is actually a clip. You, this is the very first thing you see of the very first episode is Chris Harrison come up to Peter and say, yo, bad news. Something's bad's happening. You see Peter's like, oh God, what's happened? Oh, oh what? No. <laughs> on a bed, he's all stressed out. What? So throughout Why? the entire season, you're like, oh man. But what's gonna what's, what's gonna happen? happen? Last episode. Here yo, we go. Peter, I've I heard some bad news. Hannah Ann may not be coming to the proposal. <laughs> so Peter's like, what? No, not the other Why? girl. She won't be leaving. Five minutes later. Oh no, it's all good. She's there. She's there. It's fine. It's all good. Nothing She's bad just, happened. There was some traffic. So she is she is there mm. and uh, it's all good it's all good there's no worries they just yeah. had that bit in there to tease something yeah. that meant nothing mm-hmm. um, probably because nothing interesting actually happened with the ending no or there was nothing well, else they could show without giving it away yeah exactly um, so they just needed to insert something um, but yeah putting Peter through the rear again for no reason yep. they would have known she was coming they yep. would have known yep. someone would have asked be like hey you coming yeah, yeah sure <laughs> I mean, so, like in the shot, she was like dressed up in a like dress and stuff, and she was coming. Yeah. Um. So they propose, even though they probably shouldn't, because Peter seems to still be pretty in love with Madison. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's Hannah Ann, winner by default rather than yeah, being yeah. picked, um, which sucks for her because she seems like a very nice girl. Yeah. Who, as far as me searching the Instagrams, does not follow rules regarding covid so oh, idiot is out there having fun but hey whatever whatever if she's at least uh you know practicing social distancing hey, yeah Come what you gay, can do you know? uh but it doesn't work out and uh they go through a fairly emotional breakup i'm not gonna play the entire clip because it's just peter getting railed on the entire time <laughs> it's so good for a little bit of context this is from the finale uh the clip is not live but Chris Harrison, Peter, Peter's parents who are in the audience yep. and Hannah Ann are live in front of a studio audience watching this. Yep. There is a picture in picture as this is being played on a big screen. So we get to hear the emotional breakup of uh, of this uh, relationship, I suppose. I would, wouldn't even call it that. No. <laughs> I think this is like never what I ever Ever, ever. Imagine me. I know. I said yes. <sighs> and I get this. Why didn't you just let me go? Instead of taking this away from me. <laughs> Sorry. Like from the bottom of her. I'm sorry. so sorry. Sorry for what? For taking that away from you. For confusing you, for having you have to deal with me and for not being man enough to follow through with your words, to not being true to who you not being true to your words. Not being true to your feelings. Is that what you're sorry for? Yeah. I swear to God, I never, ever envisioned this, ever being here, this moment, having this conversation with you. I swear to God, I would never have done that to either of us. Then why is it happening now? Get him. Get him. It goes on for longer, and it's just, it's really sad. Yeah. It's it's, it's uh, just, it's Peter is sitting there, you can see, the keep. he's just stone-faced. Yeah. Just has, like, this constant look of just, like, he's so dejected. Yeah. Uh, they cut to shots of Peter's mother in the audience. Uh, 
just the face of disgust. Yeah. She is staring a hole through her son's head. Yep. <laughs> um, it very much feels like, how dare you break up with my daughter, Peter? Yeah, yeah. Um, she was Which, dream, given though. that they've probably met for like an hour. Yeah. Not not great. No. <laughs> uh, and you also get shots of uh, Hannah Ann, who's looking <laughs> smug as hell. And probably Good has every right her. to, because she completely emasculated this man on yep. television. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work out. They say their goodbyes. And then Chris Harrison's like, Peter, Hello. doesn't worry though. Right? I went and saw Madison. <laughs> I was like, yo, it didn't work out with Hannah Ann and, and Peter. Would you want to give it another shot? And she's like, She made that noise there. She made that noise. She was like, oh, that's her leaving to go to Peter. <laughs> She's right like, there. fucking no. I don't know if you heard that. There was a, a, a bike outside. A, motor- a, a motorcycle. A motor- it's still, still out going. There. Still going. It's gone. All right. <laughs> uh, so she says, yeah, sure. I'm willing to give this another shot. And they, they meet briefly before the finale. Mm-hmm. But here they get their first live meeting yeah. in front of everybody. And what we see is is a is a very uncomfortable moment that did not need to happen. No, probably shouldn't have. And I think uh, after the show, even the producers, especially Chris Harrison, said this is maybe a bad idea to do this. Yeah, uh, one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen on television. <laughs> um, and that is uh, just Peter's mother just going scorched earth yeah. over Madison. It started on a rocky road because she had us wait three hours for her to come in to, she didn't want to meet us. So we were there three hours. We had just come across the country, I mean, excuse me, across the world. And we were exhausted and, you know, we were just, you know, just getting used to the time there. And we had to wait three hours. And when she did come in, the whole family, you know, we didn't get an apology from her. And when I proceeded to ask her if she was madly in love with my son, she said no, and that she would not accept a proposal in four days. So how do you expect a mother who loves her son with all of her heart to take that? I couldn't, my whole family, my son, Jack, my husband, Peter, and myself, you, you didn't see that. Right. And as a mother, that, you know, it wasn't what we were expecting and therefore when I said that I wanted Hannah Ann so badly was because I knew that she's just the issue to us we just clicked right away we did not have unfortunately we did not have that connection with Madison I think it's the, the great comparison between this and Truman Show is the use of the parents yeah to affect the show mm-hmm. uh Truman's mother in the Truman Show is constantly the thing to shoot down a lot of his ideas. Yeah. Um, oh, no, don't do that. Yeah, no. Don't do that. Why do you want to go to Fiji? Yeah, <laughs> a waste of time. Yeah. You should be thinking about having a baby. Yeah, and yeah. Such. Settling down, yeah. staying in Sea Haven. Um, and, of course, the father being the ultimate yeah. use of, you know... Manipulation. Na- manipulation. Um, this here is being used to just cause drama. Yeah. And... Again, just ruin Peter's life. He's trying to get along with Madison. Their conversation before Barbara gets involved is going pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say so. And then we get the creme de la creme, the uh, the final moment um, of, of the show. Just the cherry where, on top, really. Like. To this point, Barbara is liked among the audience. Yeah. She's fairly entertaining. Yeah. Um, a little over the top. Yeah. Uh, there's still some goodwill there. All of that evaporates in Thank like you. a hot second <laughs> with the devil with this uh with this with this amazing line i think it is important that you guys find your space and find your love but obviously family is important it's massively important so barb how do we turn the page and and give this a shot together chris he's gonna have to fail to succeed that's it so you kid the live audience there just yeah. going Whoa. they are not happy with that and what she's saying probably isn't wrong. No. They don't, Madison and Peter don't seem like a great fit because Peter likes to have sex and Madison is waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Madison, so unless they're going to have a really quick marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like a great fit. But this conversation should not be happening. 
no. on television. No, no. It's just awkward. It, everyone looks bad coming out of this. Like, nobody looked good. No. <laughs> uh, in terms of Instagram followers, which is a big aspect of The Bachelor. Yeah. Peter lost followers. Uh, Madison lost followers. Barbara lost followers. For some reason, she had a lot of them. Yeah. Which maybe that is, again, an aspect of it, which is like, how just much is this her getting chasing. her stuff off yeah. to try and get clout? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about like the sort of circumstances of this, you know, talking about ruining Peter's life and ruining his sort of public image. <laughs> yeah. He has started to recover a little bit. I think people have started to just move on. Yeah. Um, but for a hot minute there, was not was not good. Nope. Um, reality television has this uh, effect on an audience that is, you know, we may live our lives and we may not live perfect lives, yeah. may not be particularly happy. Reality television provides an escape, as does all TV. Yeah, yeah. But it provides an escape that is supposed to be real. Yeah. In concept, it's called reality television. Yeah. Um, so you watch something like this, or you watch something like the, the you know, keeping up with the Kardashians. You're being shown an extravagant life, yeah. a perfect life. You know, The Bachelor provides, you know, that wonderful romance, love story type deal. Yeah. Keeping up with the Kardashian provides, look at the glitz, look at the yeah, glamour, yeah. look how perfect these people are. Like sort of an hour uh, of reach life. Yeah. For most people. Provides the escape, provides maybe also a thing to work towards. Yeah. Um, in a Healthline article by Leah Campbell, um, children list reality TV star or famous as their future career goals. She way more often than actual jobs. That is right. Or at least an increasing amount. Yeah, yeah. Um because they see it, they're like, Oh, I go yeah. on The Bachelor. I'll be famous. Like that's I go sad. on The Bachelor, I can just do this thing, and yeah. boom, I've got two million Instagram followers. And then I can be an influencer and yeah. just get brand deals. It becomes like this quick, easy way to get success. Yeah. Or, you know, they become superficial. They strive to have that thing that they is rather unobtainable. Mm. Like the Kardashians yeah. perfect life mm-hmm. and how they look and everything yeah so it has a very negative effect on society and also mental health wise yeah um, uh the mental health first aid england i said the, the. I don't know that um 24 percent of women and 13 percent of men in england are diagnosed with depression in their lifetime mm-hmm. reality television is primarily uh advertised to women yeah, for the most part, uh, obviously not not solely. No, no, anyone can watch it, but it is typically you know in in concept and how it's produced and what's shown. You know, keeping up with the Kardashians is mainly meant for women. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it becomes very interesting in that case. Obviously, there's many aspects. Mm-hmm. You know, women are treated far worse than men are. There's probably plenty of reasons why many, yeah. many of them would be suffering depression. But this is you know one of those aspects, one mm-hmm. of those things. Um, and with uh, it's especially interesting because of how much of it could, obviously is not real. No, yeah. Um, Mike Fleiss, the creator of The Bachelor, yeah. uh, did an interview with the Today Show back in 2012 <laughs> uh, that 70 to 80 percent of what you see in reality television is fake. So as the creator of the show, just going, yeah, yeah. 80% of this is it's not is real. just not real. Um, the direct quote is, uh, they're loosely scripted, things are planted, things are salted into the environment, so things seem more shocking. <laughs> uh, uh, a situation earlier in the season that we didn't play a clip of because it's way too long um, was a bottle of champagne that was oh. uh, uh, one of the contestants yeah. of the season had a bottle of champagne, put it down and was like, I'm going to have Peter share this wonderful moment with Peter. And um, Hannah Ann and Peter just happen to walk up at the right moment, see this champagne, and uh, they just pop it open, and bottles. this girl has a meltdown. Yeah. Um, way over the top. Probably mm-hmm. need to have that meltdown. No. Um, but hey, emotional moments, say the tensions are running high. You can be eliminated at any moment. Yeah. Um, and one has to wonder, did they get tipped off? Hey, there's a bottle of champagne there. Maybe she go over there and, and yeah, for sure. have it out. You know? Yeah. I can only imagine, especially with how it was filmed after the fact. Like you can mm-hmm. just see, like it's like it turns into like a thriller almost <laughs> with with the editing of the show. Yeah. It's just like, oh my god, I can't believe she did that. Just crying her eyes out, can't really shaky cam all over the yeah. place to show how real it is. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that is the peak emotional manipulation of the show. Just like they ruined this woman's night yeah. to get a moment. Yeah. Because they knew she was going to flip out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably the other aspect of the effects on the contestants. Um, <laughs> Peter took a beating in the public eye here. And, you know, multiple people get uh, the villain wrong. You know, they might be a little bitchy, yeah. whatever. So then they edit the show. You know, Bachelor isn't live. It's edited. They edit the show to make people look a certain way. Yeah. Um, could cut out a piece of context in terms of conversations that would be happening. Sometimes, uh, I didn't get a clip of it here, um, but sometimes have edited pieces of audio in places where they may not have been to make it seem like someone has said something that they haven't. Yeah. You know, like, oh, they said this line and they've taken that out of context and put it into this situation. And now it sounds like they've they've said some mean or whatever. Yeah. And it's just it's just pure manipulation to tell a story. You know, that is reality TV. Yeah. But it has a negative effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. The audience being one thing. Um the the batch batch nation, that turns out, <laughs> quite racist. Yep. Uh many of the uh women of colour who have appeared on the show some awful, awful things said about them in terms of their race. Mm. Um, And uh, most recently, also not being good, Hannah B, former bachelorette, uh, dropping the N-word on a live stream (laughs) while singing along to, um, I think it was Rockstar by The Baby. Yeah. Um, And that's a bad one. That's rough. She gave a really bad apology and then ghost. (laughs) It has not been on social media since. She is completely ghosted. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, so bad so when that is your your bachelorette yeah yeah and the other aspect she has had a ton of people defend her saying it was just in a song guys it's fine it's not fine though is it like it's like no you said that word and your apology was terrible she was yeah. trying to be like oh did I say it she's from Alabama yeah did I, did say, I say it, it? I'll oh, say it again oh I'm sorry I don't think I said it it may be it was my brother she literally blamed it on her brother seriously she literally said I think my brother said it so it just overdubbed her does brother your, say does it. your bro- no she no, said no, it yeah, no, but, like, yeah. but then tried to blame it on him even though it was clearly her you could see her say it oh so it was like wait did your brother say it and you're just trying to put it on him yeah or have you just thrown your brother completely under the bus <laughs> she don't care anyway she later just gave out like a really standard like PR mm. team Written sigh at the start of the statement <sighs> apology no oh, oh, this was it written. was a statement it was okay, a statement it wasn't even a video okay. i'm very sorry shouldn't have said it bye <laughs> <laughs> um it was bad yeah. but yeah the amount of people defending her was that's disgusting ridiculous yeah um and uh beyond even the bachelor i mean love island has had contestants that have mm. taken their own lives yeah uh, their lives ruined most recently um, a show that I watched, Terrace House, um, on Netflix, um, just this uh, oh this God. last Saturday, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the contestants, uh, Hannah Kimura, who's a, a Japanese professional wrestler who was appearing on the show, um, had a little bit of freak out at one moment, yeah. maybe we reacted to a situation, um, and then the show perpetuated this story that like there are hosts of the show mm. who comment on things that are happening. Okay basically driving this narrative that she is a bitch and she's a nasty person. Mm. Um, and then all of the fans started hating on her. Yeah. She deactivated her social media and such recently came back, continued to get hate. Yeah. And sadly just this last Saturday, uh, took her life That's because of, of the situation. Yeah. Um, that is both, st- you know, stoking a fire in the audience yeah to hate on someone through their use of editing and use of narrative and also greatly affecting someone's mental health because of the way they've been portrayed yeah everyone who's basically said anything about her is that she's a lovely girl was a lovely girl Mm -hmm. um and was just shown to be bad in this incident and it yeah obviously led to this tragic outcome yeah um i like i don't know if i'm going off here but i feel like if like obviously the editing and stuff has had like an effect like that people who have put that together and created that narrative and made her feel that like low they should have like some sort of um like there should be some uh 
uh, justice. Yeah, yeah, like like through the consequences. Yeah, consequences. I wonder if I don't. I'm not sure if the season has finished airing. Yeah. I wonder if it, if they'll just not air the rest of the episodes for the season. Mm. and put out statements saying sorry we'll look to do better so far there's been nothing right. i can see that has been said about it um from the production end um it's just interesting that reality television probably being the most popular form of television on the world yeah is also the most dangerous yeah like hearing you know when certain shows are on it's like oh this may have bad effect on the kids yeah this may influence people in a bad way oh god we can't show sex. We can't show no. you know, this type of thing. We can't do that. But we can show reality television. Yeah, yeah. We can mess with people's lives. Influence can... people and ruin people's lives yeah. and have these incredibly damaging effects just based on the concept. Yeah. Um, and have it be okay. Yes, it's yeah, all good. It's fine. Green Let's light, continue yeah. to promote like, it. Let's yeah. just continue to do it. Bring um, the money in, you know. So, yeah. It's, um, uh, it's that, rough. That bugs me so much yeah it's just like yeah there's been so many different aspects yeah of, of it that are rough um apologies for a bit of the download no no it's, but, it's like gotta be talked about isn't it like yeah very negative aspects of the show yeah. that are out there you know just in terms of giving people something rather unattainable mm. to strive towards and also just like yeah like these awful effects that it can have um Let's sort of raise the spirits a little bit. Yeah. I want to mention two other reality shows just quickly. Okay, let's go. Number one, uh, Lizard Lick Toen. <laughs> <laughs> Lizard Lick Toen, to give you a big 180 in terms of <laughs> in terms of tone here, um, was uh, my dad watches it, mm-hmm. and uh, it was recommended to me by Chris, one of my one of my lecturers, Chris. Okay. Uh, only watched it briefly. The best way I can describe it is uh, the part in the Truman Show. Where before, uh, before Truman is one hundred percent out and escapes, yeah, he's sort of figuring it out and is like it's breaking down a little bit. Yeah, imagine if that was the entire show, but instead of because it was like mistakes, it's just because they didn't care and they just wanted to make a bad reality show. Oh God, <laughs> like it's just poorly made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the situations they get into are so ridiculous. Okay. Um, another good example would be Duck Dynasty. Who that entire thing yes. is just purely fake. Yeah. Have you seen the photos I've, of them when they're younger? Yeah. They're just like all dressed up real snazzy. Yeah. Clean cut. Mm-hmm. Two year, two or three years later. They're just hillbillies. Yep. Camo. <laughs> bearded up. They've it's just like, changed the way of life, you know, to. You have just, you're just playing characters. Yeah. And also your granddad is incredibly homophobic. <laughs> yeah. And you got, you cancelled. No. Um, the other show is uh, Love and Hip Hop. One of the many different varieties, Love and Hip Hop New York, Love and Hip Hop LA, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Miami, you name it. Um, I've never seen a reality television show purposefully look as fake and scripted as what this is. Um, my guess is that it is entirely 100% scripted. Yeah. Other than the aspects where real life gets in the way like mm-hmm. some, one of the people go to jail or whatever or <laughs> someone gets pregnant yeah um other than that just with how it's shot we got slow motion really nice like slow motion shots great lighting like it looks like a soap opera yeah rea- uh, like television show just like a fictional show but those are real people meant to be doing real stuff it's not it's completely <laughs> fake it's it's so well produced that it yeah. cannot be real yeah um and uh, it's just an interesting thing of like so much of it being fake. Mm. Like I remember talking about the Kardashians and I remember when Kim Kardashian got the, uh, that robbery in Paris where she got tied oh, up yeah. and stuff. Yeah. They addressed that on the show and yeah. they treated it with like a lot of weight and a yeah. lot of seriousness. Yeah, yeah. And it was like one of the few times that she always felt like really real. Yeah. Yeah. And then like you watch the, <laughs> you just watch the, uh, trailer for the most recent season and it's like Courtney slapping the face <laughs> off of Kim <laughs> and it's like I bet they'll be fine by the next episode yeah and yep <laughs> it's like okay so what you can easily tell what's real yeah because they treat her with a lot of importance mm-hmm. and then everything else all the drama is just like it's just sorted just like yeah uh, you know would just you like slap that. me in the face for a million dollars 
Hmm? Would you slap me in the face for a million dollars? I'd slap you in the face for a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of what it is, isn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd knock you on your ass, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, all right, sorry, man. Yeah, just getting it down. I'll take it. I'll take a cut. Um, so yeah, reality television, a wonderfully horrible, terrible situation. Uh, mm. The Truman Show was accurate. Yeah, just uh, yeah, a couple, uh, a couple articles. The main one uh, being the uh, the Vanity Fair article by uh, Julie Miller. Uh, Twenty years later, uh, everything is the Truman Show. <laughs> yeah. Um, which uh, talks with uh, the director and Jim Carrey and Laura Linney about the show and how at first they were like, oh, this is just some absurd thing. It's like yeah. rally television all souped up. Yeah, yeah. And then you look at today and it's like, actually, that's that's somewhat tame what compared yeah. to what's actually happening. Yeah. Um, so give that, uh, it's a pretty lengthy article. Give, uh, give it a read. It's Worth a really a good, read. really good read. Um so yeah, I think that's brought us to the end of uh, end of today's episode. Yeah, it probably has. The name may change if we do another. Yeah. Um, depending yeah. on how it goes. Um, but I, yeah, I don't have much else to say. You got anything else to? Uh, not to really. Add? Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're good. All right, I think we're good. Uh, thank you for listening. Hell yeah. And uh, if we do decide to do another episode, hope to see you there. Maybe. Naturally, uh, naturally, yep, yeah, naturally, right? <laughs> deconstruction. Of Natural Libre mm-hmm. uh, as through uh, the writings of Shakespeare. So. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. Right. And goodbye. Bye.